listening to The Knicks Recap, your source for all New York Knicks-related content. What's going on, everybody, and welcome to another episode of The Knicks Recap, your source for all New York Knicks-related content. I'm your host, Troy, and don't forget to hit that notification bell so you stay updated with all of our latest episodes. Joining me today, you see him on screen. He is an Emmy Award winner for his work on MSG 150. You can catch him pre and post game for Knicks and Rangers, and you can clearly see him wearing the uh, Rangers shirt over there. Gotta give some love to the Rangers. Their season's underway. Their full uh, service MSG uh, support here. You know what I'm saying? That's what it's all about. He's originally from uh, Manhattan, New York as well. Please help me welcome the great, always great, Bill Pito. Bill, how are you doing today, man? Good, Troy. Thank you so much for having me on. Uh, it's, it's great to talk to you. Getting ready for the season opener. Knicks look pretty good the preseason going three and one. Uh, hopefully it's a great regular season. Oh, I absolutely think it uh, it will be. And we saw a lot of great things uh, in the preseason. I just wanted to, again, shout out MSG Networks really quickly. You winning uh, MSG 150 for the first time as a host, that's an incredible achievement. MSG Networks in general always does pretty good at this uh, these type of events. But the fact that you were recognized this time around, can you just speak a little bit about what that means to you finally getting this award? Well, it means a lot. So the MSG 150 segment has won many times. In fact, it won the Emmy for best sports cast this year for the fourth time. But for the first time I won as best sports host. I'd never won. Thank you. I've been nominated before. And let me tell you, there's nothing worse than going to this event, being nominated for an award and not winning. So I've won. We've won the MSG 150 best sports cast repeatedly, but this was the first time I won as best sports host. So that was a big thrill. Spencer Julian, our next producer, I think has won three of the last four Best Producer Awards. Our great directors, Howie Singer won uh, for Best Director. Mike Breen split the play I play award with Iron Eagle. And the Knicks broadcast overall won for Best Season Series. So big, big night at the, at the New York Emmys for the Knicks, that's for sure. Uh, the Knicks production and broadcast team. So we're all really excited about that, that's for sure. As a Knicks fan who not only embraces MSG Networks, watches it all the time, watches you, Alan, Wally, Monica, all of you guys, there's a reason why you guys win. It's not because you guys just put stuff together and just see what works. There's effort, there's talent, and there's obviously a process that you guys follow behind the scenes to get this stuff to look the way it does when we see it. As a Knicks fan and as a video producer myself, watching an MSG Network 150 segment go in and out of transitions between videos and words and you and back to the team and then back to the videos. The amount of play work that that takes is extraordinarily difficult. It takes a lot of good timing and precision. The fact that you guys do it not only on a regular basis is phenomenal. And as a Knicks fan, and I'm sure I speak for everybody, we really thank you and all of MSG Networks for really giving us this amazing content week in and week out. Well, thank you, man. We have, we have great crew. Monica has been a great addition. Yeah, uh, Alan Wally, myself, we try to have fun. You got Mike Breen and Clyde Frazier. They're both in the Hall of Fame. Clyde, I'm sure you're aware, got in this summer as a broadcaster. He's the only person in the history of the sport into the Hall of Fame as a player and a broadcaster. Yes. Uh, so we got a great crew. We got great crew on camera. We got a great crew behind the camera. And we have a very interesting team to cover this year. Looked pretty good the preseason. I thought the starters looked really good. Can't wait to get rolling here for the regular season. No, absolutely. Absolutely. And I mentioned before, before we got on this uh, call that I have you on uh, this week, Alan on last week, Wally Zerbiak. I think we talked about it before. I'm going to chase him down with uh, being his caddy on the golf course. And then hopefully between uh, between his strokes, he'll be able to have a couple of questions uh, answered by me. What do you think? Well, if you got to talk to Wally or you want to find Wally, just go to the golf course, go to a golf course near you in Long Island, track him down get in a cart, find out where he is, and then you, you, that's your best bet of getting Wally to, to, to record something with you. Go to the golf course. All right. So I'm going to be making some uh, list of golf course near me very soon, and I'll be driving to each one praying that Wally's there. <laughs> so hopefully we can get that done. But uh, let's go into some Knicks-related things uh, that we're supposed to talk about for today's interview. Obviously, we just saw the Knicks close against the Wizards uh, on the preseason, their final preseason game. They beat the Wizards going 3-1 and one for the entire preseason. There was a lot of things that I loved 
from this uh, next preseason, more than I've seen from past preseasons. There are three players, though, that impressed me completely during these last couple games. Jalen Brunson, R.J. Barrett, and Mitchell Robinson. Jalen Brunson, because he just looks so smooth. Bill, when I'm talking about a point guard that can just walk into the paint, penetrate, create, uh, to take a phrase from Clyde, and also to be able to find the open man as you're trying to play physical down low. I don't remember the last time I've seen a Knicks point guard be able to play this smooth, go in and out whenever he wants, three-pointers, layups, in the paint, outside, finding guys. When's the last time we've seen point guard play like this? It's I feel like it's been since Steph Marbury that we've seen a legit guard that knows what he's doing at that position. So for me, Brunson was spectacular. RJ was the, you know, consistent in terms of his threes getting better, I thought. Free throws looked better. So he's doing the things that we need to see him do. And then obviously Mitchell Robinson was just an offensive monster on the boards against the, uh, against, uh, excuse me, the uh, Wizards. The uh, Wizards, excuse me. Yes. Yeah. Against the uh, Wizards on uh, Friday night just uh, taking them to school. And I think he was a big part that we won that rebounding by, I think, 20 to 25 bounds uh, for the night. What did you think overall on the Knicks uh, preseason as they closed out against the Wizards on Friday? Love how the starting five seems to be playing together. Brunson, as you mentioned, has been a really good add to this point. Now, yeah, it's a preseason. Yeah. It's only been four games, but he's very good at protecting the ball. He's good about getting the team into its sets. I think I think it makes it easier for R.J., he didn't have Randall ball, nom- ball dominating and taking bad shots. Uh, I think Brunson is going to be a huge add. Uh, the starting five look really good. Small sample size, but they look like they're playing really good basketball. Uh, Bournier didn't play a lot. Uh, my, my thing with this group is hopefully they have enough outside shooting. Going to need something from Fournier for sure. Uh, I don't know that the bench looked great. That's a little bit of a concern for me. Obi was up and down. Uh, quickly was up and down. Grimes was out most of the time with a bad foot. So we'll have to see. Uh, I know fans love Obi, but you got to watch Obi on the defensive glass. If he's going to be in that second five. He's got to rebound and not leak out for the highlight play. Agreed. Agreed Tom Thibodeau loves and, and stresses that defensive rebounding. Uh, Brendan Brown, our great Knicks radio analyst, makes a point that Obi, you got to look at his defensive rebounding numbers because if he's leaking out too early, it's not great for that second unit. Uh, so, Starting five looks ready to go. I think we could all agree that, that we need a little bit more improvement from the second five. And, you know, it's funny. I thought the reserves um, against the rematch against the Pacers, I look at the plus minus a lot. I think that stat for me, it means a lot. So I look at that and I noticed that the entire bench for that game was a negative plus minus uh, while the starters were all positive. So to your point, that also does state a little bit about the fact that the bench has to figure out what's going on. A lot of people, we talked about this briefly uh, before, a lot of people did want to see Cam Reddish in that starting or even reserve unit. And I think he's made, in terms of his play, he's not done anything to earn a rotational spot in Tom Thibodeau's 10-man rotation. But the fans really do get behind Reddish due to his athleticism and, his again, his talent offensively. We have not seen that during this preseason, but if you go back to where he was with the Hawks, that's kind of what people are looking for um, with Reddish. But I, I, in terms of Reddish for you, uh, I, I believe that you don't think that he, in, in terms of getting a position, you don't think he's even going to crack the rotation once things get started, right? Tom Thibodeau's got that great line. Everybody loves a backup quarterback until they see the backup quarterback play. So where's Reddish going to play? You're not sitting Grimes. The only reason Reddish got run is because Grimes was hurt or Rose was taking a night off or Fournier was taking a night off. We know the starting five. The second five is going to be Hartenstein, Obi, Rose, Quickly, and Grimes. We know that the coach hasn't played more than 10 players. Where is Reddish fit? I don't think Reddish gets any run unless someone gets hurt. Same with I, McBride. McBride was, with, you know, Tibbs loves McBride, but 10 guys, that's it. The only thing I was thinking about with, with McBride was regarding if Rose rests. Because if Rose does have some rest nights, maybe you'll want him to put him at uh, the point guard, again, unless you trust quickly that much. But what we've seen from... Again, a couple games. It's only preseason. I don't want to, you know, knock quickly too much, but he needs to be a little bit better in terms of cognizant of where players are and understanding where he is and if he should score, if he should shoot, if this is a good shot or bad shot, because against that Pacers game, especially, he's taking really bad shots. I think it's four of 18 and uh, was really not looking for the open man. So I think they might want to experiment with uh, McBride at that position if Rose is resting. What are your thoughts on that? See, what's interesting to me is that, let's say Rose takes the night off, are they going to go with Reddish or McBride? in the 10th spot. See? Ooh. 
I don't I, know. Well, the coach will only play 10. Maybe it will be McBride. Uh, I don't think that Reddish just doesn't look like he's, I don't know. He just doesn't seem like when he gets his chance, he makes the most of it. He doesn't shoot very well. Not a great shooter. Uh, I don't, I, I mean, if this was his opportunity, I don't think he made the most of it. That's for sure. No, absolutely. If this was the opportunity to show what you can do and see if you're a reserve or a starter and you put on this type of performance, you've not moved the needle enough to say, yeah, Evan Fournier can't start anymore or Evan Fournier should be on the bench. Right now, nobody, no no Nick right now is beating Evan Fournier out for his position. So Evan Fournier is going to start the season as a New York Knicks starting guard, right? Now, whether he loses that or not in the, you know, in maybe 20 or 30 games in to Grimes is somebody else's decision, but we haven't seen enough of Grimes yet. We only saw him in one preseason game. But maybe this is just me, uh, Bill. I want to ask you about this. Did you like what you saw from Grimes in the, in the uh, starting unit or the potential starting unit, which is basically Brunson, Grimes, RJ, Randall, and Mitch? They played about a few minutes, I think, in the third and fourth. I think it was maybe the fourth, actually, of that last final preseason game against the Wizards. I thought that Grimes was a little too much in the corner. Like when he went on offense anyways, he was just stuck in the corner, kind of just floating around over there. And I think it would be better for him if he was moving and cutting a little bit more. What did you think about the small fruit brief minutes you saw of this squad together? Well, uh, first of all, I thought it was interesting that Grimes was playing with the other starters. Agreed. I don't know if that's something that Tibbs may, may experiment with. Uh, as you say, maybe Fournier is not going to be the starter at that spot the entire season. But I don't know that that unit – with Grimes has enough shooting. I mean, I don't think we can say anything about Grimes. He missed the first three preseason games. Yeah. Tibbs said he was kind of rushing things. He's trying to get acclimated, reacclimated to game speed. I, I don't want to, I, I wouldn't say anything about Grimes from what we saw in that last preseason game, but you know, he's going to play. The question is, if you start him, do you have enough shooting in that, in that first five? And I don't know that the answer is yes. I think you need Fournier with that first group to space the floor. Just think about it. You got Brunson likes to drive. RJ likes to drive. Uh, Randall plays with the ball in his hands. You got Mitch down low. I just think you need Fournier to help space the floor. No, I agree with that as well, too. I think Fournier's best asset is shooting, obviously. Um, I think, and again, it's a small sample size, but while, while they're on the floor, I think you want to take maybe uh, before, uh, all-star break last year but I think it, I was talking to Alan Hahn about this in terms of the shooting percentage the shooting that that Grimes gives you at least in terms of percentage is almost equivalent to what Evan Fournier gives you he gives you a little bit more defense now I think obviously being the vet Evan Fournier probably has a little bit more experience in these moments and you know for when the big moment counts he might not get those rookie nerves as maybe a Grimes would so I can understand if that's the argument of keeping him in there but if we're talking about shooting Bill you know, just on a, again, he's a rookie, but just based off of that alone, uh, I think, uh, I think it makes sense that, uh, that Grimes can potentially get a start. We'll see. And then you got to say, okay, how's Fournier work with that second unit? Um, I mean, that's definitely something to watch. I mean, of all the spots, that's the one that could be uh, up in the air a little bit, but there's no doubt on opening night, Fournier is going to be in a starting five. And I guess we'll see what happens from there. You know, it's going to be interesting to, for me to see uh, who closes the games. Is it going to be – I don't think it'll be Fournier a lot of, because uh, that Tibbs doesn't like, always like to play him in crunch time, but are you going to have Rose in there? Maybe Grimes is the, is the fifth guy uh, in the closing five. That's going to be interesting. I don't think it could be quickly Rose and Brunson. Will it be Rose instead of Fournier or Grimes instead of Fournier? That's going to be really interesting to see. I agree 100%. I think that the – the people that you have closing the game shows who Dibs has a lot of trust in. I think because of that reason, rather than a lot of people who might want to see quickly there, I think what you might see is Rose and Brunson backcourt for especially close games, just because I feel like Brunson is the guy he showed you his quality and his, you know, his talent over these last couple of games. And Rose is just a Tom Thibodeau trusted vet. When, when in doubt, go to Rose route. Right. And I think that's what uh, Tom Thibodeau is probably going to do. So I think you'll see a lot of Rose, come these uh, final minutes, especially if the game is close. You know, I think we underestimate Rose's importance, but we shouldn't. They got him, of course, during the COVID year in February with him in the lineup and went 24 and 11. Rose last year gets turned in December, and then things got really challenging for the team from December on without Rose closing games and crunch time when the games were on the line. So I think he is really important to this team, really important that he stays healthy. Absolutely. 100% agree with you. Rose, uh, as a locker room leader, 
uh, his voice, his presence on the court, I think makes a lot of uh, difference. And I think coming into the season, he's going to help this uh, team get right, especially that uh, second uh, unit. Going into uh, this uh, preseason, though, after it's all said and done now, we're, we're finished with it. Who's impressed you the most from this preseason thus far? Uh, Brunson, for sure. I hadn't really seen a lot of him. I'm really impressed by how he runs things. He's making things easier for RJ. Randall hasn't had to shoot a ton. Uh, Brunson, for a little guy, is really good at getting to his spot. He doesn't get knocked off his spot when he's driving to the basket. He's very strong. Uh, he looks like he shoots well enough. He doesn't turn the ball over. I mean, he looks really, really good. And, man, we all know, you know, here, here's a great uh, tidbit for you guys. There's been one guy, maybe you know the answer, who has started more than one opening night at point guard. One guy who started more than one open at point guard since 2009. Do you know who it is? Man, I'm not sure, actually. I'm thinking about it right now. Felton. Oh, my goodness. I would have never guessed 2012, and, and he wasn't even back-to-back -back years. Only guy. So that goes to show you how this point guard position, Ramon Sessions one year, you know, Guy, you remember uh, we had Alonzo Trier one year? Yeah, yeah, I remember um, him. Jared yeah. Jack, maybe. I, you know, it's just, uh, it's time. It's time. So what Hope Bill is basically... The answer. So what Bill has basically just walked you through is the past of Knicks history and why, at least for point guards, and why Jalen Brunson is such an upgrade, because he absolutely is. And speaking of that really quick, I want to go into the expectations for this Knicks team against the Grizzlies coming up to the uh, season opener this Wednesday. Bill, what is your thoughts really quick on the season opener against the Grizzlies with this Knicks team? What do you expect and what do you think is going to happen with this Knicks team uh, on the road for their season opener against Memphis? See, I'm not so concerned about opening night. I I'm just looking at the first four games. You got Memphis, you got Detroit, you got Charlotte, you got Orlando. It would be really nice to go three and one because then you got Milwaukee. That's true. Uh, Charlotte's hurt. Ball's hurt. Uh, Orlando Suggs is hurt. Detroit's young. They got a lot of young talent. I think I'm not so concerned. You lose at Memphis, fine, but then you got to win the next three. Hopefully, they win three of their first four. That's what I'm looking at here as the season starts. Uh, absolutely. I agree. I think uh, the, the first couple games are going to be uh, important to see. I, I'm curious as well to, to see how they deal with their uh, home opener as well. But the for me, it's RJ and it's Ja Morant colliding in that first opening night matchup to start the season. That is an explosive matchup. And what I'm looking for is RJ to take another step once that season starts saying, okay, I'm here. I got the contract. It's time for me to shine and show what I can do against a game Grizzlies team led by John Moran. It'll be interesting. You know, of course, that was a pick two and pick three in that Zion Williamson draft. RJ got his money. Although, you know, when you look at what some of these other guys are signing for, like Poole just, I think, got 140 million bucks with the Warriors hero. Got a, I think they got bared at somewhat of a good price compared to what all these other guys are signing for. Hey, Barrett. The guy works hard. He's got a great attitude. He had a very efficient preseason. Uh, we, we've touched on this. He's got to shoot better in terms of percentage. He can't be going 40%. Got to get that up. Uh, he didn't shoot well enough. Yeah, he averaged 20 points per game last year, but he had to take a lot of shots to do it. So hopefully he's more efficient. He was really good. I think Brunson helped him in the preseason. Hopefully that's something to watch against John Morant and the, uh, and the Grizzlies. Hopefully that's that's something that works out. So I'm not going to take up too much more of Bill's time because he's gave us so much already and so much great insight. So I'm just going to get you really quick, rapid fire, yes or no, three questions. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right, here we go. First one, will R.J. Barrett become an all-star this season? He will one day, but not this season. Does Grimes eventually start this season? I don't think Grimes will start this season. Will the Knicks make the playoffs this season? All right, I took uh, with a guy at work, the over-under was 39 and a half. I took over. I think 39 and a half is too low for them. I, I think the Knicks will make a play-in. Uh, I'll say they'll win a one play-in game, but lose a second play-in game and then not make the first round. Oh, okay. I see that. I also agree with you. I think that the Knicks will more than likely be a play-in team, but I don't know. Uh, and the record's probably going to be within the Fords in terms of wins. I think their team is that good. But where they end up, whether they get to the playoffs or anything else like that, 
is anybody's guess. I don't know, but um, we're definitely going to find out as the season starts this Wednesday, October 19th. But for us here at the Knicks Recap, we just got to give another shout out again to the great Bill Pito joining us on this very special episode of the Knicks Recap. Bill, thank you so much again for joining us. And again, your analysis has just been spot on. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. And uh, hopefully we can do it again soon. Absolutely. I hope so. And I hope that we can. Until next time, Nick fans, don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow us. Take care. Listen to new episodes of The Knicks Recap, streaming every Friday.